Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your kid, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Hey, come to the junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Hey, come to the junction. It is run by Joe. Come and be his guest at the junction. Hey, come to the junction. Here's our lady MD. She's as pretty as can be at the junction. Very cool junction. <laughs> What do you think of this? Where'd you get all the junk? Oh, you've been to the Hooterville dump. No, I have not been to the Hooterville dump. And this is not junk. <laughs> Sorry. Well, where have you been? The church rummage sale. Oh, that's right. That is today. Just look what I got. A hammock, kitty car for Kathy Joe, alarm clock, croquet set, weather vane, not to mention a wheelbarrow. Guess what it costs. Go ahead, guess, guess. Forty cents? Three dollars and a quarter. <laughs> Croquet set alone's worth that. Uncle Joe. Yeah? Well, this croquet set. What about it? Well, it's a croquet set that we donated to the rummage sale. What? We got it down from the attic yesterday. And the reason we gave it away is because half the wickets are missing. And the heads keep coming off the mallets. And the balls are all cracked. And the paint is... Okay, okay. So let's make one bad little deal. Uncle Joe. Yeah? It's an alarm clock. It doesn't have an alarm. So it's my kind of an alarm clock. One without an alarm. <laughs> oh, look at this weather vane. Well, it's all rusty and everything. Why don't you girls go and finish your housework? <laughs> pick, pick, pick. So I make one bad little deal. you were Mr. Carson. I am Mr. Carson. Impossible. You're working. <laughs> How can you sit there without taking a nip out of her? <laughs> Hello, girls. Oh, hi, Mrs. Plout. Hello, Mrs. Plout. I came by to let you girls in on the news. I just came from seeing Henry off on the train to the city. Oh, she's going to attend Madame Colette's Charm School. Oh, how wonderful. Good for Henrietta. <laughs> Madame Colette's Charm School, the very same school I attended. You did? What'd you take? <laughs> well, I've heard a lot of nice things about Madame Colette's Charm School. No doubt you have, dear. It's probably the finest in the world. Oh, what a curriculum. What kind of 
courses do they teach? Well, now the first course is entitled How to Trap a Husband. Uh, how to appeal to the opposite sex. <laughs> and after four weeks of that, the poor suckers, uh, gentlemen, don't have a chance. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're going to go outside and have our picture taken. Oh, hello, Mrs. Plow. Hello, dear. Oh, what a cute baby. Thank you. <laughs> how old is he now? It's a sheet. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Joe, I want to get a picture of Kathy Jo. Oh, good. You're just in time. How do you like it? Very nice. You did a very good job. Yeah, well, let me have the camera. You and Kathy Jo can sit in the hammock. Okay, that'll make a good shot. Oh, it's all set to go. Uh, Betty Jo, uh, could you take my picture? Not with our camera. <laughs> That's one thing Henrietta requested, that I send her a picture myself. I've enrolled Henrietta in a charm school. The very one I attended. Another dropout, huh? <laughs> it's the very training I received in charm school that enables me to rise above such remarks. Uh, where would you like me to stand? Oh, uh, anywhere over there is just fine. Well, no, no, no. Uh, the background is very important. Um, I learned that in modeling. I used to model for a well-known soft drink company. What'd you model for? One of the bottles? <laughs> I'm glad I hate you. <laughs> I know. Why don't I sit in this hammock? Okay? Fine. Come on, Uncle Joe. It won't hurt you. I better snap this gently. It might explode. <laughs> oh, my back. Oh, my back. Oh, my back. How could she hurt her back when she landed on her? Uncle Joe. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh. What happened? The hammock broke. Here's Doc Craig now. Oh, whiplash! Whiplash! Oh. I'm so glad you're here, Doctor. Oh. Come on, let me get you into my office now. I just hope I can make it. Oh. Joe, give me a hand. Oh. Oh. Whiplash. Ah. Sounds pretty serious to me. That's what I'm afraid of. How could it be serious? She only fell that far, and with all her upholstery. <laughs> Something like this happening to Selma Plout could mean real trouble. Not a chance. Doc will give her a shot, and she'll be out of there before you know it. Oh! 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 See what I tell you. Open the door and let her out, Steve. Uh, no. Hey, what's going on? Uncle Joe, we're taking her up to room seven. What? Well, Joe, we can't send her home. Henrietta's at school and there's no one to take care of her. Well, what about the old folks' home? <laughs> Uncle Joe, we are obligated to take care of her. Okay, I'll give her a break. We'll only charge $10 a day. <laughs> $10 a day? Oh! I'm not paying one red cent. And that goes for my meals, too. Oh. Oh. <laughs> to Petticoat Junction. Hey, you guys. Bell ringer's at it again. <laughs> We're coming. Don't tell me that's all for Selma. Who else? <laughs> she claims she has the appetite of a bird. Yeah, the Baltimore Orioles baseball team. <laughs> hey, Doc. Yes, Joe? Say, Doc, uh, level with me. How bad off is Selma? How bad off is she? Yeah, I mean, how long are we going to be stuck with her? Well, actually, I couldn't detect anything too serious. But you know how it is with a back problem. You have one, too. I do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my double detached slip disc. Well, they can be very tricky. But your back hasn't given you any trouble for a long time now, has it? No, not since the girls asked me to help them rearrange the furniture. Well, it's been a long time. Medically, the back is the most difficult part of the body to diagnose. Mr. Carson! 
Listen to that ding a -ling ringing that bell. Mrs. Carson! Come up here and bring your toolbox. Oh, you better humor her, Joe. You know we have to keep on the good side of her. Yeah. Hey, a toolbox. Maybe I could operate on her. <laughs> Squeaking sound. I thought it was you turning over in bed. No, it was the door. Yeah. Sounded a lot like you, though. Well, we got that fixed. Hey, now, just in case. We're... Don't you take it. <laughs> What about it? Look at it. My chickens roost in a better place than this. I'll bet they don't cackle half as much as you do either. <laughs> Just for your information, this happens to be the Millard P. Bradley Memorial Suite. Oh, really? Where is he buried? In the mattress? <laughs> I wondered about that lump. What lump? That's the other side of you. <laughs> oh, I'm liable to forget I'm a lady. Big deal. That's a natural mistake. Hi, darling. Well, hi. Well, don't tell me that's another order for Selma. Mm hmm. She eats every hour on the half hour. <laughs> oh, no. What is it this time? Chicken noodle soup. Yeah? Uncle Joe. I just want to see what's in it. Chicken and noodles. What else? You ever thought of ground glass? <laughs> Starting to get you down, Joe? Starting. She's setting up there ordering things like she was Mrs. John D. Rockefeller. <laughs> How long do you figure she'll stay? Probably until we go broke feeding her. Yes, Mrs. Plow? This soup is cold. Next time, make it warmer. Why don't you blow on it? She's got enough hot air to heat the whole pot. She can also cause you a lot more trouble if you don't treat her with kid gloves. What more can she do? She wants me to have you mail this for her. What is it? Hmm. Timothy T. Timken, attorney at law. That give you an idea what else she can do? You mean she's gonna sue? Well, I don't think she's mailing a chain letter. <laughs> Let her in. Are you kidding? This is no time to irritate her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Mail it. What else? How about we burn it? Oh, I should just send another one. Oh, sure. What are we going to do? I don't know. It's too bad you're not covered by insurance. Hey, now you're talking. You mean you got an insurance policy? Yep. Would you mind looking the other way? I've got to open a secret wall safe. Oh, sir. Hey, is that where the secret wall safe is? No, this is just where I keep the combination. <laughs> you right three, left four, right two, left one. I think you can remember that? Sure. Good. Tell it to me when I ask you, then erase it from your mind. <laughs> All right.
What are those numbers? Right three, left four, right two, left one. Doggone it, I forgot. I changed them combination numbers. Well, well what did you change it to? I can't remember. Well, what are you going to do? Well, there's only one thing we can do. Hand me one of them pens off the desk. Take security precautions. Oh, you have to. <laughs> there she is. Hey, you really do have a policy. Yep. Uh oh. This expired in December. Oh, really? Hmm. That's too bad. You missed it by a few months. No, by golly. It was December 1924. <laughs> Medico Junction will return after these messages. How did we make TV Line 34% better than real life? With our foolproof system for total TV relaxation. TV Line's TTV RS. I'm telling you, I went over every system. Pro and con, I looked and I added, I subtracted. This is it. I refigured it, checked it, rechecked it, tested it. It never failed. Listen, as our highly trained staff explains the essential nature of this technically complex system. The whole thing is based on the principle of seven. Very simple. Nothing to it. Elementary. Pure mathematical genius. But TV Land's total TV relaxation does not begin to take effect on you until our technicians set the system in motion. They do it scientifically. Oh. They put a goldfish in a shoe and then they throw the shoe out the window. Oh, the marvels of science. TV Land's TTV RS. And Kate Kennedy thinks they have complicated equipment. Technologically designed to make TV Land 34% better than real life. Take me to TV Land. Hey, man, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour is up next. Can you dig it? Sam, you got a law book? Sure. As Justice of the Peace, I have to have one. What kind of a mess are you in now? I'm not in a mess. Joe, I saw the letter come through. Selma Plout's getting ready to sue you, isn't she? Well, isn't she? Yeah, I'm in a mess. That old gal could be pretty rough on you, Joe. Yeah, I know. About the only thing I got left to appeal to her decent side. Now, uh, you got a problem there. You got to find her decent side first before you can appeal to her. Get out your law book. What do you want to know? Oh, as uh, part owner and general manager of the hotel, uh, what's uh, the limits of my liability? Liability. Liability. Here we are. Oh, here's a case that set a precedent. Dalrymple versus Turner. Hmm. 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 What, Sam? What? Hmm? <laughs> Will you stop that? Hmm? Tell me what? Hmm? Oh, uh, according to this, you're in luck. No kidding. And she can only sue you for everything you've got. Everything I've got? What do you mean I'm in luck? Well, Joe, when they get down to checking your assets, once they get past a fishing pole, a duck call, and a pocket knife, it gets pretty bleak. Yeah. Sam, I'm not worried about myself. This could mean the girls could lose a hotel. Yeah, I know. I got to do something to stop that old biddy. What you need is to get yourself a good lawyer. Yeah, but who? Well, uh, how about Oliver Wendell Douglas? Oliver Wendell Douglas? Yeah, he's a pretty smart fella. Isn't he the one that's married to that blonde? Yeah. Well, when it comes to law, he's a pretty smart fella. <laughs> I'll go over there with you. Oh, 
office closed for spring planting. Oh, no. Where are they when you need them? <laughs> May I help you, gentlemen? Uh, we were looking for our lawyer, but he's not in. Well, perhaps I could handle the case. I'm an attorney. No kidding. Say, uh, you might just do that. Hey, Joe, you don't know this felon. What's the difference? He's a lawyer. Who knows? He might be another F. Lee Bailey. Can save my skin. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> the way the things are now. She's lolling around up there, eating us out of house and home, and ringing that bell. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> I see. I must say, Mr. Carson, it's very interesting to me to hear your side of this case. Now, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, what do you mean, his side of the case? Please. What would you like to know? Well, first of all, was the accident your fault? Well, sure it was. That's why he needs a lawyer, Sam. <laughs> well, for crying out loud, Joe, it happened at your place, on your hammock that you bought yourself and put up with your own two hands. Is this true, Mr. Carson? Yeah, it's true as far as it goes, but, uh... Is there more? No. <laughs> well, that doesn't. You're clearly at fault. You see? <laughs> why? Well, in setting up that hammock, you created what is known in... Legal parlance as a, uh, uh, an attractive nuisance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my, glad I brought you along. <laughs> well, what do we do now? Well, I don't know what you're going to do, but I am going to confer with my client. Client? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My card. <laughs> Timothy T. Timken. <laughs> Attorney of law. <laughs> you represent. That's right. This is Selma Plout. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. Brother F. Lee Bailey, huh? <laughs> sure look like he meant business. Yeah. What can they do to us, Uncle Joe? Nothing. Then how come we're so worried? <laughs> Girls, I don't know what to say. I got us into this, and it's all my fault. Oh, don't blame yourself, Uncle Joe. You couldn't help it. It was an accident. Yeah. But accidents are always happening to me. I feel like running away from home. So close to dinner time? Well, yeah, there is that. What do you suppose they're talking about up there? I'm going to find out. You mean you're going to face them? Well, more or less. You mean I can take him for everything he's got? Well, I don't want to seem over optimistic, but with the information I've got, Sure, why not? Oh, my back feels better already. No, 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 not till after the trial. <laughs> when are you going to serve him with the papers? Oh, I want to be there and watch his beady little eyes crinkle up with tears. <laughs> well, come on then. I'll do it now. <laughs> Mr. Carson, I want a word with you. Uh, Mr. Carson, now, you wait a minute. Mr. Carson? Mr. Carson, you wait a minute. I can't hear a thing. Go and sign his trouble. Henrietta, 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 Henriet
See, it's the hammock we donated to the church rummage sale. What's this? Uh, 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 Henrietta, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do, Mama. See, it still has our name in the corner. Remember, you said we might as well give it away because it was liable to break through any minute. No. Oh. Didn't they even teach you to lie at that charm school? <laughs> Mr. Dimkin, does this mean you're stepping out of the case? Are you kidding? Boy, you're a lousy client. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mama, but at least you're well. I am not. I'm sick. Do you hear me? Sick, sick, sick. Oh, well, we'll get my things and get out of here. Well, Selma. Selma, as long as you're sick anyway, why don't you pay your bill as you go by the desk? My bill? Yeah, for your room and all the food you gobbled up while you were here. Maybe you'd rather go to jail for trying to defraud an innkeeper. <laughs> oh... Now, let's see, six days at $15, American plan, that is... Oh, just make out the bill and stop gloating over it. <laughs> it's a nice sight, that. But I do feel sorry for them poor tears having to roll all the way down that big nose. <laughs> Sunday evening's the time to saddle up your pony, because we've rustled up a parcel of shows you won't see around too many places these days. Westerns. So John the Posse, tomorrow night starts at 9 o'clock, Eastern, 6 Pacific, for TV Land Goes West. Up next on TV Land, the Adams Family. Stay tuned. Petticoat Junction.